Just imagine, tiny nanorobots buzz through your arteries and operate independently, without energy introduced from the outside. Or roofs open up when it starts raining. Or blinds when the sun gets too hot. Their source of energy lies in the environment alone, and their movements are programmed into their materials, their design. Impossible? No! They would be independent machines modelled on the movement systems of plants. The physicist Peter Fratzel from the Max Planck Institute of Colloids and Interfaces in Potsdam Golm is searching for intelligent materials from nature like these. His department researches the exact structures of different biomaterials because during the course of evolution, nature has adapted its materials perfectly to the tasks in hand. It is this optimized structure which leads to the amazing characteristics of materials like wood, bone, or the exotic glass sponge. The fascinating thing is that nature manages with quite simple basic components that are actually quite inferior as regards quality, but then fits them together so skillfully that high quality materials result. So it is above all design which makes intelligent materials out of simple basic ones. Is that also an approach towards a sparing use of resources? The goal of our work here at the Max Planck Institute is to develop new materials. And we want to design these materials as well as nature itself does. What specially interests Professor Fratzel is the movement of plants. Pine cones, for example, consist of dead material. Nonetheless, they open and close simply through changes in humidity. And the ice plant, or midday flower, Delosperma nacurense, also uses this effect. It grows in dry desert regions where no rain falls for months. While it is dry, it stores its ripe seeds in special capsules. But as soon as it rains, these otherwise lifeless capsules open up and the seeds begin to fall out because the seeds can only germinate when the ground is moist. And the mechanism is even reversible. If it turns dry again, the capsules will close up again, simply because the water evaporates. The fascinating thing is that the seed capsule of the midday flower exists completely without metabolism, just as a robot would have to manage without metabolism. That means here we really have a principle that could be translated into robotics. Peter Fratzel and his team want to figure out the trick of the seed capsule. They want to work out from which part of the seed capsule the movement actually stems. They are in luck. On the inside of the lid, they find a special layer of cells. It is part of what is known as the keel. The keel even opens up when it is released from the capsule. So it is this which is responsible for the movement of the lid. But how does it achieve it? The scientists discover that the special cells in the keel are what make the movement possible. They can be found especially on the underside of the keel, and when moisture is available, they absorb water. The cells contain 90% cellulose, a substance which swells up easily. Like baby's nappies, the material swells up when it is damp, because the absorbent material expands. The same thing happens with the cells in the keel. When they absorb water, they swell up and make the keel unfold. So now we know the impetus comes from a structure that swells up or increases its volume by absorbing water. But that is not sufficient because the swelling takes place equally in all three directions. So now we need to look more carefully at the structures in order to find out how the effort is diverted in such a way that a movement in one specific direction takes place. 
The folding movement of the seed capsule must have something to do with the structure and design of the cells inside the structure. So the scientists want to know what form the cells have and whether other materials apart from cellulose are involved here. So they color the cells with a special solution. The inner cellulose layer turns blue, while the cell walls turn red. They consist mainly of lignin, a substance that does not absorb water. When the cells come into contact with water, the cellulose expands, but the lignin of the cell walls does not. What is just as important as the different materials is the form of the cells. They can expand in only one direction. This means that the honeycomb-like overall structure also only expands in one direction. The result is that the keel pushes itself apart and opens up. So the lids of the seed capsules open up because various components are carefully adjusted to interact with each other. Since this happens on several levels, we speak of a hierarchical structure. At the Max Planck Institute, they are also experimenting with the first possible applications of this principle. This prototype for a roof opens itself up when it starts raining. On the one hand, we need two very different materials, one which can swell up and another which can't. That is what produces the deformation. And on the other, we need the correct alignment in space so that this movement can actually be implemented. The prototype consists of two films, one made of wood and the other of paper. When moisture is present, the paper swells up, but the wood does not. The different expansion makes the cell buckle. If the individual cells are arranged in a honeycomb structure, the entire construction will open up if moisture is present. It is the same mechanism which also unfolds the seed capsule of the midday flower. As in the flower, the movement is programmed into the construction and can take place without external energy. So we can imagine all sorts of uses in future. Of course, they are still only dreams, but we could imagine elements of a facade or rain covers which open up when it rains and then close again when the sun shines. The big advantage would be that no motor would be necessary since it would be driven directly by the water. So once again, the midday flower may be the starting point for completely new technical applications. And it is not the only example of this because in nature, there are lots of interesting materials from which scientists and engineers can learn. <laughs>